Hello and welcome to this video on the area of non-rectangular quadrilaterals. In particular we're going to be looking at two quadrilaterals, a parallelogram and a trapezium. Now let's just say we wanted to find the area of this parallelogram here. How could we do it? Now what we could do is if we could cut off this kind of triangle here and then stick it on the other side. So if I do that I've then got this section here, I've moved that over here and I've got the rest of it here. And we can see that we actually form a rectangle. Now we know how to find the area of a rectangle, we just do the width times the height. So the area of a parallelogram, note the spelling of parallelogram, is just equal to the width times the perpendicular height. And by that I mean that the height has to be at right angles to that width. And we'll do some examples of this in a second. And what about this trapezium here? Well, we've got these two parallel sides and we've got the perpendicular height. And again, by perpendicular, I just mean that that height is at right angles to these two parallel sides. Now we can use the same trick as we did with the parallelogram. We can sort of form a rectangle where we kind of average the two parallel sides. So I'm constructing a rectangle where the width of it is sort of the average of the widths of the two parallel sides. And you can sort of just about see that the area of that rectangle is going to be the same as the area of trapezium. In fact you can see it because if I was to take this area here and put it into here they will have the same area even though I've drawn it slightly badly. And this area here has the same area as this triangle here. So by putting that triangle there and by putting that triangle there, we in fact do form a rectangle. So the area of a trapezium is effectively that of a rectangle where we do, instead of the base, we do the average of the parallel sides and then we times it just like with a rectangle by the height between them. Now, we could use these letters here to form a formula. So the average of the parallel sides, well, to find the average of A and B, we would add them and divide by 2. That's how you find the average. And then you times it by the height between them. But I think it's easy to remember the formula like this. So we just average the two parallel sides, and then we kind of find the area of the rectangle with that average width. So let's highlight these two formulas. Now, let's do some examples. We've got this parallelogram here. Now, one of the elements in this diagram is a bit of a red herring. Now, this is a parallelogram. We do the width times the height. So we've got the width here of 5. So the area is 5 times, well, what is the perpendicular height? Well, perpendicular to that 5 is the 3. So we times it by the 3, and that gives us 15 centimetres squared. That 4 there is known as the slant height of the parallelogram. It's not the perpendicular height, which is perpendicular to the base. What about B? This is, in fact, a rhombus, because all the sides are the same length, but a rhombus is just a special case of a parallelogram because a rhombus still has two pairs of parallel sides. And again, one of these lengths is a bit of a red herring. Well, have we got two perpendicular lengths here? Yes, we have. We've got the 6 is perpendicular to the 7. So let's use those two lengths. So the area is the width, which in this case we're going to make the 6, even though it's vertical, times by the perpendicular height, so by the 7 and that gives you 42 centimetres squared. What about C? We've now got a trapezium. Remember, a trapezium is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. Now, for the area, we just treat it like a rectangle, but we average the parallel sides to find the width of that imagined rectangle. So the average of 4 and 8, well, we could add them and divide by 2. Or you could just say, well, halfway between 4 and 8 would be the average, which is 6 centimetres. So it's this times by the height between them, so the height of the imagined rectangle. So that's 12 over 2 is 6 times 5, which is equal to 12 centimetres squared. And then D. Now this is a trapezium, but it may help to identify the parallel sides first. So we can see that that length is parallel to that length there. And so we apply the usual formula. The area is the average of the two parallel sides, this time I'm just going to say, well, halfway between 5 and 9 is 7, so that's the average of the two, multiplied by the height between them, which is 6. 
and that is going to give us 42 centimetres squared. Now question to determine the area of the kite. So we've got a slightly different kind of quadrilateral here. And we're told this height is 6 centimetres and this width is 10 centimetres. Now we know that a kite has a line of symmetry like this. So it might help to split the kite into two separate triangles. And then we know the height of each triangle is going to be half of 6, which is 3. So the area in this case is going to be two lots of, because we've got two triangles. And remember, the area of a triangle is half times base times height. So half times base, which is 10, times by the height, which is 3. 2 times half is 1, and then 10 times 3 is 30. So it's 30 centimetres squared. Now finally, we've got this harder algebraic problem. Now we're told that the area of this trapezium is 17. Now don't be upset by the fact you've got algebraic sides here. Just do exactly the same thing as you usually would if you were told about the area of trapezium. Well, we know to find the area of the trapezium, we average the parallel sides, it's those two sides there, and times by the height between them. So to find the average of the parallel sides, you add them up and divide by two. So x plus x plus 7, you could put that in brackets, we don't really need the brackets if we're just adding it. And then we divide by 2, and then we times by the height between them, which is 2x. And we're told that area is equal to 17, so we can say that's equal to 17. And now we have to show that we can get this particular equation here, which is known as a quadratic equation. So let's simplify this a bit. Well, x plus x is 2x, so we've got 2x plus 7 over 2 times by, now I'm times a fraction by a non-fraction, and you might know that we can turn that non-fraction into a fraction by putting it over 1, because that allows us to now combine these two fractions together. So 2x plus 7 times 2x, I'm just going to do 2x brackets 2x plus 7, which means I've multiplied them together, and that's over 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, um, I don't like fractions in my equations, so I could multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that over 2. So if I times both sides by 2, times thing by 2 on the left-hand side gets rid of that over 2. So we're just left with 2x, 2x plus 7. And then if I times the right-hand side by 2, I get 34. Let's expand out the bracket now. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 7 is 14x, and that's equal to 34. Now we're getting close, but we've got 4x squared, that's 2x squared. But notice that all of these things have a factor of 2. So we could divide both sides of the equation by 2, and that gives us 2x squared plus 7x. This is looking promising because it's looking close to this, equals 17. And yes, we have got this. All we need to do is just subtract 17 from both sides and we get the equation that we want. And just to note that when you have a show that question like this, it doesn't mean solve that equation. That's a very different type of question. It didn't ask us to solve it. It wanted us to use the information provided to generate that equation. It did not ask us to solve the equation.